Fai te roi a rish da corte iascri agus shagri. You're all very welcome along to another video from Gun Dog and Fly, and uh, I'm here tying one of my favourite little wet flies. Brilliant little fly, particularly at the beginning of the season, and uh, I'll get around to that in a minute. But what I want to talk about is the once again fantastic response from all of you um, to the last video, and suffice to say. The consensus is the name shall remain the same. So the name of the channel at Gundog and Fly is going to remain as is. Um, dozens of people, not, there was only one or two who suggested alternative names which I asked for, um, but the consensus is quite definitely keep the name as is. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, in the last video, I also started out with a, the very beginnings of fly tying and some of the stuff that's required. Now, I may have left a few little things out here and there, but they probably occurred to me again, and uh, I, I'll mention them as we go along. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to tie this little wet fly that is absolutely brilliant from start to finish using very basic materials and very simple techniques that virtually anybody can learn in very short order. If you look back through my video catalogue you'll see a lot of different flies that I've tied down through the years and there's a commonality. Most of them are very simple to tie and take less than five minutes. The vast majority of them I can tie them in two to three minutes. They are very, very simple flies, but there are many people who will vouch for their effectiveness. And there are many thousands of trout who, if they could vouch for them, would also vouch for their effectiveness. They are absolutely brilliant flies. I've, I've tried and tested over many years. So, I'm going to tie the, the simplest form of a wet fly. And like I said, using very basic materials and very basic equipment and Please join me for that. I, I have to do a little stuff. I can't use my magnifier. I can't film the tying of the fly through the magnifier. I don't have the facility to do it, nor do I have the expertise. So what I actually have to do is, I have a little table which I'm just going to grab here. Oop. A microphone problem here now. Okay, this little folding table, I'm going to have to fold it out here and I'm going to film the tying of the fly on here. Now, it's not ideal, it's not perfect, but um, as you'll see, you will be able to see exactly what I'm doing and I will try to explain each little part or section of it as best I can. And if you spot anything that I leave out, um, I won't leave out anything intentionally, uh, but if you see anything that you have questions about just drop into the comment section and ask me the question and I'll do my very best to answer it. So um, let's go. Now this is the little fly we're going to attempt to tie. If it's your first time there is obviously a little bit of difficulty in tying a fly. It's very fine work, very small work and there are little techniques and little tricks involved in tying any fly that you will have to learn and like any learning process it takes time if you're a complete beginner tying a fly like this won't happen overnight you will have to practice and like any discipline the more you practice the better you'll get at it but this fly is very very basic and very simple once you have mastered the very basic techniques that I'm going to point out now Okay, to tie this very simple fly, these are the tools and materials you're going to need. Fly tying vise. As I said in the last video, it doesn't matter. Um, as long as it ho holds a hook steady, that's all that's required, okay? Hooks. In this case, I'm using, like I recommended in the last video for wet flies, Camasan B170 in size 14. Very good, solid, strong hook, never lets you down. 
Um, tying silk or tying thread, whatever you want to call it, the stuff I'm using here is Semperfly Wax Thread in Yellow, 8-0. And that's um, on one of my nice little small um, bobbin holders. A nice short one. Okay. Scissors. Fine point. That's what I like. Vein of my life, the hackle pliers. This is one of many I have. None of them are great. Uh, a whip finisher. I want to talk in a little detail about that in a while. <coughs> and now, what I have here is what's known as an Indian cape. And it's dyed black. Now, all it is is a chicken's neck. They're imported into Europe by the million from India, where apparently they kill a lot of chickens. And they save the feathers and they're sold quite cheaply. I would not pay any more than a fiver for an Indian cape. Sometimes if you go to people who sell fly tying stuff, uh, tackle shops, etc., they'll have Indian capes. You'd see them, generally a bunch of them in a box, and uh, take out the best you can because the feathers are never great on them, but they're quite adequate for tying wet flies. Oftentimes you see where they've been pecking each other and some of the feathers are broken and that, but for less than a fiver you'll get quite a bit of value out of it. So this little fly that I'm going to tie here is my <coughs> a black and yellow spider I call it. Now I've no doubt that I'm not the first to tie this fly. It's probably tied a hundred years before I was born, but it's very very simple, very very basic, but a brilliant fish catcher. So um, I'm going to get to how to tie it right now. Now <coughs> that's one I've already tied. So the first thing to do obviously is to put your hook in the vise. Now I'm tying in 14 which for me is quite big but for most people, when I when I show them size 14 flies, they say, oh my god, they're very small. Hook in device. Now, you're tying silk. One of the main um, mistakes or blunders, if you like, that newcomers make is that they crowd the eye of the hook making it difficult to work up here. Where the eye of the hook is where most of the tying occurs. So you need to leave a space for to do that work. Right? It's very important that you don't crowd the eye of the hook. Now I always start off, you'll see people start off like this and it's fine. Okay? You just start off like this, hold your tread there and start wrapping. Okay? Nothing wrong with that whatsoever except now you have to stop to cut this off. Right? Now you can eliminate that little step. If you just hold your thread very short and wrap. Of course I'm doing this now without the aid of my magnifier so um, it's not as easy for me obviously. So now I'm wrapping the thread and now I just touching turns follow it down along and I've taken out that step if you like out of the process. I don't have to do that little cut, so it's just to shorten the route if you like. Now another thing I didn't mention, and um, this is one of my most important tools as well, is a permanent marker. Now I'm using the black one in this case because as the fly's name uh, implies, it's black and yellow, so the body is going to be ribbed black. So rather than um, using some form of black wire or black tine silk or anything, all I do is I mark about three inches of the tying thread with black marker and now I can create my rib spiral back up towards the front of the hook and again please note I'm leaving the space to do to tie in the hackle just here 
if you go too close to the eye like this, well then when you get the hackle on you won't have enough tie you won't have enough room to tie your knot and it just makes it's better to be too short to have the fly tie too short so to speak than to crowd the eye because you won't be able to get your leader into the eye of the hook if you if you block it or if you crowd it. So now the next thing to do is the hackle. Now how do you size the hackle? How do you know what's the right size? Now it's a matter of experience for the most part, right? But there are ways you can get hackle gauges and all kinds of measuring things to measure the hackle in it, its proper size for a proper for a 14 hook or a 16 hook or whatever size you're tying. And um, but there's no real need of it. All to do is just practice, and you'll get used to looking at feathers, and you'll get to know what size is appropriate for the hook that you're using. Now, one black hackle. Now to prepare the hackle, I just strip away some of the soft, the softer stuff nearer the base, if you like. Now that's what you're looking for. That's what you want, right? And I offer it up to the hook like this, okay? Now this is the tricky part for a beginner: is to be able, to, is to be able to just bring the tread over the hook like that and tie in the hackle. That requires a little delicacy and dexterity. Again, practice makes perfect. And now I'm tying down that stem really tight without obviously putting too much pressure and breaking the thread. And now I can snip that off. Now, the hackle pliers. Actually, I might try a different hackle pliers even though I know none of them are any good. I'm going to try this one here. Because I've been using this one already today and it's caused me no end of grief. So I'm going to tie it with this one. So I'm going to grab the hackle by the center stem. Now when I'm holding the hackle it, it, vertical and I'm going to put a finger each side and draw the feather fiber back the way. In other words in that direction. And when I have it facing back the way I do a half turn. And if it continues to behave itself and stay oriented back that way I then put another half turn. Right? And then I bring it, it was bound to happen, wasn't it? They slip, break the feathers, they're a nightmare. Anyway, let's not harp on about that. So here we are, bringing the hackle around, right? And then I bring it up to where it's, oh, this gets very frustrating, really honestly. You want the patience of someone who has patience. Something I'm not blessed with. Anyway. Right, I'll try the other hackle pliers. Not that it will probably won't be much of an improvement. Anyway, here we go again. And I bring it up to where it's vertical. Oh, jeez. This is really testing. Please somebody invent a good hackle pliers. Now, it's been suggested to me that I put glue on little bits of rubber and stuff onto the jaws of the hackle pliers. I've done that before. It still slips. Now here we go. I'm bringing my tread over. I have two turns. I have three turns. Three turns is generally enough. And this is where the precision scissors comes into place because you need to be able to cut the 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 feather fiber that side of the thread and not cut the feather fiber this side of the thread. So that's where a fine point scissors comes in. Snip, there we are. Now I have two, three turns on it, so now I'm going to reinforce that and pile on a few turns there like that. Now you notice there's plenty of room around the eye. Tiny little piece sticking out there if you want to be very particular about it. Now I'm going to whip finish. Now. What I'll do is I'll show you how to whip finish with my fingers, right? This is the way I learned it originally, many, many years ago, right? You'll have to follow how it's done. I can't really explain how it's done. You have, you'd have, you just have to watch it and hope that you can copy it. That's all I can tell you. It's, it took me a long time to learn to do it with my fingers and I can do it in my sleep now. So I'm going to do it a second, a second time, right? Now there's a three turn. Well, and that's a whip finish right now that whip finish is fine and has worked 
for me for donkey's years. But this little tool here, the whip finishing tool, is way more, it's again like the scissors, it's a precision instrument. You can make each turn of tread and put it exactly where you want it. Now, I, as I said, said in the last video, this whip finisher is configured to suit me. I've tried, I've done many flight time classes on that and to teach people to use this is one of the more frustrating parts because it's a difficult tool to learn how to use. It's a knack that you, you learn, you acquire over time. Um, don't come near me if you're left handed because I just cannot show you how to do it with a left hand. All I can do is show you how I use it with the right hand. What I do is I drop the triangle onto the tread, I pick the tread up with the hook, I turn it, I bring this up here parallel with the vise. One, two, three, four, five, six. Release the hook and pull, and there we are. And you have a six turn whip finish knot. Now, there's actually three whip finish knots in that, it'll hardly ever open. Now, the other thing, um, if you want, it's not necessary. Some people insist on it now. When I tie for other people, they sometimes insist that. I varnish the heads of the flies. When you tie two or three knots like that, it's not necessary. It's never going to open, not with a whip finish. Varnish was ever only really used by people who didn't use a whip knot to tie, to finish off their flies in order to secure them. Because if you only use, say, a half hitch, now a half hitch is this, right? It's just one turn, like that. That's a half hitch. And that would require varnish to hold it together. But the fact that I've, I've whip finished it, is not necessary to put varnish on it. Now you can if you like. Snip it off. And there folks, that's my little black and yellow spider. My little errant tread hanging out there. Now, that's it. A brilliant little fly. And I hope that this video um, made sense to you as beginners. If you have any questions, because I've probably left something out, I have no doubt I've left something out here or there. If you have any questions about any of the things I've been doing here, just drop um, drop them into the comment section and I'll, um, I'll do my best to answer best I can. So there you go folks, that was easy wasn't it? <laughs> For a beginner it's not easy. Fly tying takes time to learn like any skill. And uh, for beginners some of it is very frustrating, I can often see beginners their faces they, they show the frustration in their faces because something will be come undone or something will go wrong and it, it's a delicate little process that takes time to learn but very very rewarding when you can tie your own flies and go to the river or your lake or whatever the case and catch fish on it. So that's it folks, that's the first in this little series or mini series if you like of uh, beginners fly tying in the next video. What I'll do maybe is elaborate a little bit more maybe on wet flies or I might go to nymphs or something. I'll think about it in the meantime. Or if you have any suggestions, again, drop them into the, um, the little, what do you call, under the video here, the, the comment section. And I'll, again, do my best to facilitate you. So, shin shin. Um, Neil Hille, Leroy, I have not much more to say, only thanks very much for joining me and I'd very much appreciate it if you supported the channel. There's a link in the description to my Patreon page where any bit of support would be appreciated. And Goramila Mahagui asked for Kolo Dorish. Thank you very much for your company and Bemea Kaitarish live and Kia Dorella. I'll be talking to you again next time. Slong of oil.